Hi, Jacob here, and today we're going to be covering PC Tools, Spyro Doctor with Antivirus, and this is the latest Spyro Doctor with Antivirus version out there on the market. Now, I test out a lot of malware out there, a lot of rogue software, and uh, just viruses in general, including key loggers, uh, bank loggers, things like that. And I have found that uh, Spyro Doctor with Antivirus does tend to be one of the best clients out there at not only protecting your computer up front against my malware, but also at being able to actually remove it too from your system. So just want to give them a shout out real quick because they've done a, a great job and it's one of the top products I do recommend to most people who are infected with a virus. Now let's go ahead and jump into some of the settings here on the system. So I'm going to check out the IntelliGuard system. If we look here, I'll just run through all these and what all they mean. So the site guard basically is what this is going to do. is It's going to protect you against, uh, let's say you actually go to a known malicious website. Well, it's going to block it for you and it's going to say, hey, this is a known bad website. It's a really nice feature. Most antivirus clients do have that now, so it's something pretty nice. Uh, the root guard kit, hey, what does that do? It protects you against root kits and root kit threats, just like malware. Uh, the network guard is nice, and basically what it does is it pretty much locks down these network files. So if uh, a, a threat were to come in and it tries to make these changes, changes to your host file and the like, what that can do is it can cause you the browser redirects. If you have been infected with a virus and you try to go to, let's say, google.com, and you find that that's blocked and it's redirecting you somewhere else, oftentimes it has to do with your host file being hijacked, and basically what this is going to do is it's just going to protect your network settings all in all. The file guard, as you would imagine, is the main thing on here, and what that does is when a virus tries to come into your system, it's basically going to block it for you. So if you were infected with a virus already and then you installed this software, it will attempt to block and will successfully block, in most cases, that file from running. It'll say, hey, you're infected with the virus. Uh, the email guard, as you would imagine, email guard protects you from uh, any email threats out there. So if you get an email with an attachment of some kind that is malicious, it'll go ahead and scan that attachment and it'll tell you, hey, this is a virus, don't open it. And even if you do open it, the file guard will kick in and it'll block that file from running, which is really, really nice. The download guard works along the same lines. Basically what the download guard is going to do is when you actually download software, it's going to block it. If it, if it happens to be a virus. And something nice is it actually checks it against their cloud-based network. They have a cloud that has zero-day protection. So if it, it's a virus that's so new it hasn't been updated yet to the rest of the world, it basically will scan it against the virus definitions they have there to ensure that that file you are downloading is not a virus. And that's pretty cool. Uh, the cookie guard, and honestly, I don't care too much about cookies. I keep them myself. I like cookies on there. And it's not a big deal. Cookies basically how a website remembers who you are and cookies can't really harm you so it's not a big deal in my opinion the browser guards is a really nice feature is what that's going to do is it's going to protect you all in all your 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 browser settings so you're not hijacked you're not redirect and things along those lines is what the behavioral guard will do is it, it'll actually block it, what anything that it determines to be suspicious or malicious characters before the program actually installs in your PC. So if you go to install a third-party software client that's really not that popular out there, it may actually block that install. And what will happen is you'll get a warning and it'll say, hey, we believe that this may be suspicious. Are you sure you want to install it? And it's basically saying, hey, we don't know who these guys are. Uh, just trust if you trust the source go ahead and install it. if you don't trust the source don't install it it's just an added layer of protection that way in case malware does happen to come down upon your computer and it's automatically trying to install itself it's going to block it and it's not going to run until you actually say yes i want this program to run which is a really nice feature and as you can see this is highly customizable so if you wanted to actually shut one of these off you can shut it off you say hey you know what I don't want it scanning my email turn it off and a lot of clients out there are really hard to use but Spire Doctor with Antivirus has to be one of the easiest to use out there when it comes to actually tweaking it and actually understanding exactly what it's trying to do and if you don't understand something something really nice is hey they have the question mark if you hover it over it it basically helps explain it a little bit more in detail and same under the settings if I were to go down to something we'll say a scan settings and I hover over it if I look right here it actually gives a better explanation of each and every one of these things so instead of uh, 
you know, you're wondering, well, what does this exactly do? Enable cloud scanning. Allows files to be scanned in the cloud. Basically, it just gives you a better explanation of everything. So let's go ahead and go through the settings here. And this is the, the threats that I've recently thrown against it that it's detected, and I have more that I threw against it just recently, too. And, and every antivirus client out there is going to have a quarantine section. From here, you can remove it, or you can just leave it. And personally, I just recommend you leaving it until you know for sure that, hey, uh, nothing's happened to your system at all. Scheduled task. Here's where you're going to be able to actually schedule any tasks that you want to run. It's really, really easy to do. If I were to hit the Add button, you're just going to walk through the prompts. Let's say I want to say, no, I want to do a full scan of my computer. Next. I want to do a weekly scan. Next. You're going to select the date and time you want to do it. I want it to run on Friday. Let's see, I get off the computer around 10, well, about 11 o'clock. Just set that time, hit next, finish, and now it's going to go ahead and scan every Friday at 11 o'clock for you. So like I said, very, very easy to use. Uh, the global action list, global action list is one of those more advanced things that most likely you're not going to use, but it's what it allows you to do is, let's say there's a particular file that I wanted that the Spire Doctor with Antivirus to always allow. And this may happen at, at some point in time. You can actually browse down and select the file that you want to to actually load and then you can say always allow or you can always block a particular file or program if you don't want it running. And like I said, this is something that, that's more rare and most people aren't going to use it except for experts, but it's really nice that, that they do include in the secure community section right here is what you're going to be able to do is the basic thing here is if you want to send out your results to uh, PC tools. So basically if it finds a virus, do you want that those scan results being sent back to them so they can help improve their their client and know what malware is attacking what people and where and then all your, your privacy is still protected when you have this. I do recommend people keep this on. However, you can turn it off if you want. And here you can also set it on suspicious file detected. You can say automatically submit, do nothing, prompt me. So basically if you say prompt me, uh, it'll, it'll ask you, hey, do you want us to send this out or not? The uh, scan settings section. And right here is where you can set a lot of the, the overall settings of the computer. So if you're saying, hey, when I, I don't want it to play any sound. So if it finds a virus or something, I don't want to hear a beep or anything like that. You can say, no, I don't want to hear that. Uh, scan alternative data stream. Scan for hidden files. Basically, hidden files in computer. Low scan priority. Basically, you can set all your settings here. The one thing I would recommend most people do is actually come here and check this box right here to create a restore point before virus removal. And the reason why you want a restore point on there is in case it removes a, a threat that ends up not being a threat, basically a false positive, which is very, very rare, but still it can happen. You just want to be able to restore your computer back to that same point in time when that file was still on your system. So I would recommend you do create a restore point before uh, it, you actually remove any viruses. And here we're going to have the history, which is basically what we already showed before. Or I thought we showed it before. I guess not. So history, and this is the uh, history of all the settings that I've done. So you can see I have a game mode that I started and stopped. We're going to go under performance. And here under performance, right now it's on custom mode. You can just simply hit the default mode. And this is what most people will come, come with. And it, it's basically the uh, higher it is on protection, the more system resources it's going to take up. So, I, personally, I just recommend keeping it at the default. And if you are a gamer or something, you can just go down to the system tray and just say, hey, right-click on it, enable game mode. And when you enable game mode, it's nice because if we just hover over it, it'll tell you right there, select enable game mode, all scheduled scans, updates, backup tasks will be skipped, and all alerts disabled. So basically it's 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 going to not take up any system resources so when you are gaming you don't have to worry about uh, a scan kicking in and really slowing down your gaming performance. Which brings us over to the advanced tab and advanced tab here usually I just keep the defaults here and enable power saving mode detection as it says right there underneath. If you're running on a ba laptop battery it's not going to run on you and and like and we can enable gaming mode, disable gaming mode just general basic settings that are in here and they're very easy to use and like I said before I love how if I hover over something it actually gives you a better 
explanation of exactly what it is and that's really nice I find a lot of antivirus clients out there aren't upfront with hey what's the setting do and you have to be an expert to understand okay this does this and this does that and Spire Doctor with antivirus really makes it easy for for people to understand now under the general settings right here you can select hey uh, run on startup run the Intel scan full scan custom scan usually I, I want to have that checked myself uh, and right here for the smart update action download and install updates basically you can say hey notify me or uh, download and install updates to notify me or download and install updates silently and if it's done silently basically in the system tray if you ever used antivirus client it says updating and trend micro personally I, I don't like the way trend micro does it where it actually pops up and it shows you and then it downloads it and it's still up there and it takes forever to do uh, you can actually choose to hey run silently and in the background that way you never even have to see any warnings it's just all automatic and you don't have to worry about it it's something I really like myself and something that a lot of antivirus clients don't have out there and that's a password protection and when you enable this basically is what you can do is you can make it so that these settings in here cannot be changed any of the settings on there cannot be changed without a password on here so if you have a kid who wants to to basically turn everything off just to to improve improve the computer performance a little bit or they don't know what they're doing and they just shut stuff off uh, you can lock down these settings which is really cool uh, being able to lock it down so other users of that computer cannot change these settings on you and it's something that a lot of other antivirus clients out there are missing that uh, Spyro Doctor with Antivirus does have so over to the support tools and support tools are pretty cool and half of these you probably won't use uh, the PC tools file and registry cleanup tool if we actually take a look at that it's basically the same thing you would get if you were to type in regedit only with this you're just browsing through the Windows registry and I don't recommend most people even go in here I don't recommend people go into the registry in general but it's nice that they have the tool there it's more for experts it's not something that I would recommend any user actually play around with and here we can create a malware report to send to the PC tool support team and that's something that we should bring up right now is PC tool support they have pretty good support all in all for an antivirus company and with any software vendor out there it seems that supports always been a little bit lacking but they have to for what they charge in price they have to have adequate uh, profit in order for them to continue so it, it's yes you can actually get a live person on the phone however personally I recommend either going through the live chat or if we actually go to the support section itself here you'll see that they have the live chat they have the frequently asked questions which is really really nice and then they also have connect uh, with the other users on the community forum I find their community forum to be one of the better ones out there if you have any particular issues you can always just ask your question there and you usually get a a reference back pretty much right away and to gain access to that that all you have to do is hit the my account button at the bottom there and it'll actually take you to the pages that I just showed you and uh, PC tools ISO burner this is really nice and what it does is you can actually create a disk so let's say you have a computer that's infected with a virus you can actually come over to a computer that's not infected with the virus and actually burn the PC tools program onto it boot to that CD and actually scan that computer for the malware and remove it that way it's really nice it's easy to use and it's a great option out there for people who just cannot uh, run any programs on the computer because it already has a virus or there's something wrong with here with it at all and then right here is the uh, PC tools threat removal tool and basically what this does is it launches the cloud to scan zero day threats so a virus just came out just today it hasn't been updated yet for your updates on the client it hasn't hasn't been like 12 hours yet or something you can actually launch this and run that program against their their cloud based zero day threats that they have and it's just a nice little feature it, it's not anything too too major but it's just nice that it's there now over to the uh, scan results and I did just scan my computer here and I had a few things on here that I uh, installed down here and one thing I, I would really like to point out is we'll see how a lot of these infections that I put in here it says low it's because they actually are low and the, these are just little simple tweaks that I put down there that that aren't anything major uh, on the system and it detected them as being low threats which is really nice because you'll have some antivirus clients out there like cookies for instance it'll say high threat okay a cookie cannot do any damage to your computer at all nothing zero zip 
It's just a tracking mechanism to help a website recognize saying, oh, this computer's been here before, and, and that's it. So, so it, you know, whenever you see somebody labeling a cookie as a really high threat, that, that always is a cause of concern. So, and here I put a, it down there, the, the uh, downloader Merlot on here, and it's a medium threat, it's not anything too, too major. So if it does actually say high threat, it actually is a high threat. If it says a low threat, it's a low threat. And that's something that, that I really like having. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Create Re System Restore before I move it. Now, if I had that setting on by default, that would have already been checked. And I can just hit Fix Selected. And we can see it going here. And something else nice for the uh, scan times, 4 minutes, 14 seconds. And that was for the IntelliScan. If I hit the finish button, if you actually ran a full scan here on the computer, it's probably going to take, I have a, um, several terabytes worth of data in, in, in multiple terabyte drives. So, so yes, it would take a few hours to scan it all. And it does tell you the last time that a scan was run on there, and we'll say that, hey, no full scan's ever been ran, which isn't really true uh, because I uninstall and reinstall clients all the time just to test them out. And so since I've reinstalled this client, no full scan has been run. And one thing that, that I do mention that, that, that I don't necessarily like, and I understand why they do it, they basically put this box up here. So it'll, you'll see it in the system tray come up, and this is after you do a scan. It'll tell you if a reboot's required, but there is no really X button on here. It's just constantly there. So until I actually reboot my computer, this box will be up on the screen. And yeah, you can move it to the side or wherever you want, but, but uh, I would like to be able to close it down. And basically, is what they're trying to do is say, no, you really need to restart your computer for this, for, because we found virus threats, and they need to be totally removed. So that, that's basically uh, the reason for it not being able to close down. At least that's why I presume they, they have it there where you can't close it down until you hit the reboot button. And that basically concludes our review of Spire Doctor with the antivirus. It does get a big thumbs up for me, two thumbs up as a matter of fact. It's a good client, you can't go wrong with it. Decent support, the product works to remove malware and spyware, viruses and the like. And it does a great job at preventing you from getting infected and has a lot of nice features. Very, very easy to use. Solid client, well worth the $40 price tag. That's it, take care.